What is the undeniable mission of the sun? Regarding its timekeeping function in the Bible calendar, well, let's go back to 1st Enoch and affirm things. We're going to go to Jubilees, to Genesis, and the Qumran scrolls, and watch how they all agree on this. There really is no question. Again, Enoch 72 is very clear that the sun is the measure for the start of the year as the first law of the luminaries. Is the rising of the sun, period. There's really nothing to debate there. I know there's some trying, but come on. The sun goes out first and from the eastern gate, which is where it rises on the first day of the first month of the year. Period. All three categories. In other words, these all begin on the rising of the sun, period. Nothing to discuss. There is no other way to read Enoch. And we will address the moon next in this regard. Now let's not pretend, though, that Genesis has ever indicated anything different because it has not. I mean, day one, we all know, the first creation is what? Light. And what did he call it? Yahuwah called it day for day light. Hello. That's the first creation. And that's when he was creating during the day. Day first, night second. The fourth day, the sun is created first. Uh, during the night? Well, no, because he tells you it's day. Day light. That's what Yahuwah says. You have to believe him, of course. The sun is called the greater light in Genesis as the great luminary, same thing, in Enoch. I mean, really, these are the same accounts. Uh, they've always agreed in this essence. Modern Judaism doesn't, but who cares? That's not the Bible relationship. We don't need to become Jews. Who wants to? Uh, what do those Pharisees know anyway? Very little about the Bible, according to, you know, the one that matters, Yahusha himself. Just read his words and listen to what he says. A whole lot of leaven and deception, as we have proven. They even turned Torah against Torah, Mark 7, 9. Then we have Jubilees, chapter 2, verse 9, the creation account, which really cannot be read any other way. And Elohim appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for what? What is the sun's purpose? What do we get from the sun? What is it a sign of? The start of the? For days, for Sabbaths, weeks, and for months, and for feasts, and for years, and for Sabbaths of years, and for jubilees, and for all seasons of the years. Now that word seasons is the four seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter. And oh look, this verse, whoa, it's the same in the Sefer Bible, who disagrees with itself as they change some scriptures to fit erroneously uh, in translation, inserting the moon instead of the sun, which R.H. Charles caught. Not them, but this paradigm has existed for a while, even in the Ethiopic. And Charles caught it. He corrected it. And we'll show you what he says about it in the next videos. He tells you exactly what it's supposed to say and that they borrowed the moon, the word moon, and put it into the next sentence in complete error and, sorry, fraud. However, the Sefer Enoch tells us the sun starts the day, month, and year two. I mean, just look at the sun chart part, chapter 72, it says it many times. So then it disagrees with itself, or it has, it's claiming Enoch does, which he cannot do. When you find it disagreeing with itself like that, you know there is a problem and it is not with Jubilees nor Enoch. They not only agree with themselves, they agree with each other. They do not agree with the Sefer inserting Jewish propaganda, however. You'll see, we're going to cover that. We're going to deal with it head on.
But this verse, you can see, they didn't change. Well, they should have, because if they changed the other one to say that the moon is this great sign, and, and now the sun is the great sign, which is it? Well, it's the sun. It's always the sun. It's 364 days, so it has to be the sun, because that's the sun calendar. The moon is not 364 days. It's 354. It's so easy to see, unless you're just going to sit there and try to placate Judaism. And if you want to do that, go ahead. That's your option. We ain't playing that game here. So Enoch's calendar is reiterated by him many times over. So no one can take out one fragment that disagrees with all the rest. That is ignorant. A willing ignorance is what Second Peter calls it, and it's exactly what it is. Twelve 30-day months plus four intercalary days added, one at the end of each quarter for a total of 364 days, period. There's never any mention of the Bible year being anything else in Jubilees nor Enoch, period. Yes, the moon has a course at 354, but then he tells you it comes in 10 days too soon. Well, 354 plus 10 is 364. The year to Enoch is still 364, and the moon is error. That's the way it works. Now we're going to cover that in the next video. That's the sun, never the moon. And it is the final count Enoch gives for what is a year, period. It cannot be confused or, you know, somehow manipulated some other way. Here's what you have. You have 30, 30, 31. 30, 30, 31. 30, 30, 31. And 30, 30, 31. These are the four quarters. These are the four intercalary days added at the end of each quarter of 30-day months each with the one added at the end. So, it's a perfect calendar driven by the sun as the measure. Never the moon, which doesn't fit this. It fails. The sun and stars bring in all the years exactly. Uh, what? Did you just read that? I mean, it's pretty clear, right? Uh, well, we know. Not in the Sefer Bible. Who changed it? It's not the same there. Now, we'll explain how R.H. Charles obliterates their walking back interpretation hundreds of years in willing ignorance. Don't worry, we're going to get there in the next couple of videos. Now, you know this is the sun because it says 364 days, and that is not the moon, period. So either Enoch conflicts with himself or they are wrong. Now, we'll go with Enoch as representing the truth. Uh, in all cases, <laughs> in comparison to the Sefer, uh, which has proven to, unfortunately, peddle some Messianic Judaism propaganda from time to time, uh, certainly, especially when he speaks. Uh, it is especially hilarious that anyone would actually claim the moon, which is 354 days, somehow brings in the 364-day solar year and with perfection. I mean, the words that are used, it's exact. And that what it just said? Exactly. Well, that wouldn't be exactly, now would it? Because it's got to be adjusted by 10 days every year. You need 10 leap days, uh, which the way they do it is add a month every so many years, which is not in Enoch anywhere. It is not in Jubilees anywhere, nor is it in the whole of Scripture. And oh, that month named Adar? Oh, you mean the false god? Oh, yeah, we're going to deal with that too. Uh, coming up, a very bad error on their part, and we will point it out. But we'll prove this out in the next videos. Don't worry. We're not just going to say this and leave it. Then there is the spring equinox in March, equal day, equal night, right? Uh, no, it's not always March 20th or 21st on the Roman calendar, whatever date they give you. Uh, if you track the hours of sunlight, and you need to know, where was Enoch talking about? From what perspective? Because the equinox is not the same, for instance, in the Philippines, that it is in New York City. It's just not. Okay, um, Those are, are different. Uh, if you track the hours of sunlight, you'll you'll find different answers. Uh, and who knows how accurate those the data even is that we're getting. Uh, one would only uh, really have to sit down and chart it yourself. 
uh, to know that it's reliable data. Then the next year starts on Abib 1 at sunrise when the sun rises out of the eastern gate, which is for rising, not setting. Uh, that's the eastern gate. Hello. Enoch's pretty clear on that, is he not? I mean, only 364 times. The Bible year is exact. The moon is not exact. To this, it's exact for its own course, which is not 364 days. It's illiterate to say that the moon is exact <laughs> because it never works uh, on this calendar. The moon is a beautiful thing, but the moon is off and falls behind, and we'll cover it. Does that mean the moon is evil? Are we saying the moon is evil? Of course not. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. We've never said anything like that, and we never will. However, following the moon for things it is not created for, well, that's just called error. That's all. It's pretty simple. Uh, no, that's not the moon's fault either. So it still isn't. It's not its fault. No, no, no. That would be the fault of those who are following it. The moon is perfect as it is, but it's never the measure for days, weeks, months, nor years, period. That's it. No amount of mental gymnastics can change that. This is out there now. People are learning this, and they're getting the hang of it. This is truth. Again, the lunar year, 354 days, comes in 10 days too soon. 354 in most mathematical systems. I think I want to say all, but who knows? Maybe someone created one. Well, 354 is not 364. Think about it. Now, that Babylonian monstrosity, that's what it is, that's what it originates in Babylon, the lunar calendar, uh, requires a leap month to reconcile, and the Bible calendar does not, according to Enoch, he told you. It is exact. It is perfect. Enoch even does the math here of the year of 364 days over several years, so there is no confusion. There are no leap years, period. There are no added days other than the four intercalary days, which are in the 364 count. There are no added months, period. It is perfect as it is. Yes, the moon is also perfect as it is for its purpose which is not for days, weeks, months, nor years. In three years, 1,092 days. That's 364 days, all three years. Five years, 1820 days. That's 364 days, all five years. And in eight years, 2,912 days. That's 364 days, all eight years. I mean, these numbers are so obvious. I, it, 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 he does the math for you. So, in eight years, there's no leap year, there's no leap month, there's no leap week, nothing. Yes, he then goes into the moon and tells you how it is off every year, every three years, it doesn't match this. Every five years, it doesn't match this. Every eight years, it doesn't match this. I mean, how many times does he have to tell us before we realize the moon is not the measure for these things? You know, there's really nothing to attempt debate over here. Uh, but we will cover that more uh, next in the moon video. The thing is, this proves the Jews are really Pharisees, uh, according to the Jewish Encyclopedia. This is modern Judaism as a continuation of Phariseeism. They've been lying, and they've been on the wrong calendar all of these years. Really? They were since Bible times. So this should not be a surprise. You can catch them even in the story where Joseph of Arimathea has one calendar. Mary has another calendar. She's keeping the Sabbath. He's out buying, you know, linens and things uh, to, to bury Messiah. He's trying to get him in before sundown because sundown is when his Pharisee Sabbath starts, which is not the Bible Sabbath. And it's very clear in that passage. We cover that in our Sabbath series. Uh, parts 6a through c even with a timeline on all of it messiah's death and resurrection it is amazing how much revelation sitting right there and it all confirms exactly what we're covering right here in the book of first enoch
There you go. So this is why their Pharisee canon, which many follow today, does not include Jubilees and Enoch. Think about it. In the middle of the moon explanation and course portion, uh, in fact, Enoch says this, verse 17, uh, and it's, and the year is accurately completed in conformity with their world stations and the stations of the sun. Now, again, the Sefer Bible changed that, and we will address that in the next videos, um, but they had no right to. Uh, which rise from the portals through which it, the sun, rises and sets 30 days. To say the moon has a 30-day cycle is called fraud. It does not. It is a lie. Therefore, you can't insert moon there. If they did, they should have changed it to 29 and a half days too, since it seems like they don't have a problem changing scripture. Uh, so we're going to get to that next video or, or the one after, uh, but we're going to get there. Don't worry. And while we're on this, let's explain the day added at the end of each quarter. Chapter 75, verse 1 talks about this in Enoch. Um, and the leaders of the heads of the thousands, these are the stars, uh, who are placed over the whole creation and over all the stars, there you go, have also to do with the four intercalary days. Now that's the day added at the end of each quarter we've been talking about, which is the only adding or reconciling taking place here, period. There are no leap days. We saw the math over years and there's none there. So how can we not see that? Um, no added days, no added weeks, no added months, period. This is perfect as it is. Being inseparable from their office according to the reckoning of the year, and these render service on the four days which are not reckoned in the reckoning of the year. See the word reckoned, reckoning? You see, that's used in terms of the intercalary days, not trying to add a 13th month, which is ridiculous and never found in Enoch, never found in Jubilees, and never found in the whole of Scripture, and then named for a false god at that. Oh, disgusting from Judaism. Again, the year is 360 days plus these four intercalary days is 364 total. And that again is the sun, period. Never the moon, which is ridiculous. And next verse, chapter or verse two, uh, the exactness of the year is accomplished through its separate 364 stations. Did we read that? If the exactness of the year is accomplished as 364 days, what is there to discuss in terms of the lunar 354 versus the solar 364? Well, nothing. How many times do we have to see Enoch telling us there are exactly 364 days in the year, period, and that has to be exact. It has to be precise. The language is so clear with no reconciles other than the four intercalary days. They are the reckoning, the reconcile, already there in that number. How many times does he have to tell us the solar calendar is exactly, in fact, and exact, in fact, 364 days, and that's the sun. It's never the moon period, which would always be off and never exact any year at any time. If it were the moon, it would never be called exact, not being 10 days too soon. I mean, exactly wrong every year, exactly wrong every day, exactly wrong every month, well, and even exactly wrong every week as we tested that. Uh, it comes out that 22 of 52 Sabbaths are off annually if you follow this lunar calendar. Uh, it just doesn't work. There's no debate here. It's so easy to understand this. Enoch is very straightforward and he is brilliant the way that he wrote it and confirms and confirms and affirms over and over so that it couldn't be taken out of context. So that when someone puts out uh, you know, the book of Enoch and they change one of the scriptures or two even, well, guess what? They need to go back and change all the rest and they can't. 
They'd need to change the whole 364 days of courses of the sun, which all say the day starts when the sun rises out of the eastern gate, period, 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 the end. No debate. A couple more quick things from the Dead Sea Scrolls. What about the temple priests, the real ones, the sons of Zadok, exiled from the temple to Qumran Bethabara, where Messiah launched his ministry, endorsing their community and their Bible canon, in fact, which is the only one anyone could ever consider for such list. They didn't have Jasher, period, which tests and vets as an occult lie. Watch testing the book of Jasher. Watch testing the book of Esther as well. Enoch and Jubilees were and are Bible canon. No, not, not in your Pharisee Bible, right? That the Catholic Council changed. What right did they have to change what the temple priests kept as the Old Testament? That is a stupid paradigm. Wow. So no, not your Pharisee Bible, even from the KJV, but the temple priests Bible canon, the ones ordained to keep Bible canon by Moses himself, and also really by Jacob, and the only ones period, to the first century. The notion that Pharisees were ever ordained for anything is against scripture everywhere. Yahushua was clear. They turned Torah against Torah in Mark 7, 9. They have the same calendar as Enoch and Jubilees in this community, which they kept as inspired scripture, even labeling and using uh, in writing, in their own words, they say in the Damascus document, Jubilees is Torah and written by Moses. They say it's for the exact determination of the times, the book of Jubilees. Wow. Duh. Now, how can modern scholarship be so blind? Here we see they demonstrated a quarter as three 30-day months plus one intercalary day, right? from Enoch, that is right there. This is the Bible calendar, it's also Jubilees, uh, such as, same as uh, Enoch and Jubilees both. Remember, Pharisees are accused by the temple priests who were not liars, who remained holy according to Ezekiel, he says this three times, when the rest of Israel strayed. Ha! Pharisees are not holy. Just read what Messiah said about them. In the Damascus document, he, it says that they, the Pharisees, the, the religious system, the synagogue system of Israel, controlled by the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, all the same, uh, is turning a blind eye to Torah, Jubilee specifically, in this exact regard, because it's in that same sentence, and they still do. Judaism is Phariseeism, according to the Jewish Encyclopedia Continued, in the complete Dead Sea Scrolls in English by Giza Verms, from the introduction, Verms notes, check this out. In tune, in this way, with the laws of the great light of heaven, that'd be the sun, and not with the festivals of the nations, which they were rebuking, uh, pagan holidays, of course, uh, such as Saturnalia, which we call Christmas today, um, this has always been a problem. See, that was kept by the Catholic Church, proving they were never his ecclesia. Uh, watch After the Apostles, three videos that will blow your mind. Um, so keeping the holidays of the nations over his seven biblical feasts, no thank you. That is always wrong biblically. Sorry, but that's fact. Qumran saw its calendar as corresponding to the certain law from the mouth of God, Elohim. You mean, since let there be light? Sure sounds like it. The day has always begun at sunrise, even on day one in the Bible paradigm. It's unbroken rhythm, meaning no leap days, no leap weeks, no leap years, period, moon out for this measure. Yes, the moon has a purpose, but not for days, weeks, months or years meant furthermore that the first day of the year and of each subsequent season always fell on the same day of the week hmm so the calendar always has to arrive right back to where it started the previous year and it does on a 364 day calendar it does not on a 354 day calendar 
Indeed, and always at sunrise in Qumran as well. For the Essenes, whoops, <laughs> this dummy peddled this stupid lie uh, that Essenes lived in Qumran, which is just uh, among the most illiterate of all lines that have ever come from these Dead Sea Scroll uh, keepers who, who really uh, have screwed up the narrative in so many ways. These never call themselves such, nor does the Bible ever indicate an Essene as a temple priest. That's stupid. Uh, they are the sons of Zadok in their own writing. Many times the sons of Aaron, uh, the sons of Levi, uh, the, the temple priests that were exiled there, they tell you. It's, so why can't they just read the text? Well, because it doesn't fit their paradigm. And they are the enemies of the temple priests. They are the Pharisees. What do you expect to come from that paradigm? This was Wednesday, since according to Genesis uh, 1, 14 through 19, it was on the fourth day that the sun and the moon were created. Well, that makes sense, and guess what? This is why the Zadok Way Qumran calendar we've been using accurately begins on Wednesday and not on Sunday. Did the creation day begin on Sunday? Yes, it did. Now, they'll explain this dynamic further, and their calendars even demonstrate it, so it's not exactly something anyone could actually debate. The temple priests explain in their writings that the first of the Sabbath week, now Sabbath is the word for week, by the way, uh, so you see it, you need to understand that. Uh, so, Sunday is the first day of the week, of the Sabbath week. Uh, uh, and basically the first day of creation. There's no doubting that. That's always, that was always Sunday. But it's not when the calendar begins. And then the second day, Monday, and the third, now, so the first three days, that's Tuesday, so the first three days, which are counted as days, even before the sun was created, notice that, are to be added to it, that's because the calendar week begins on Wednesday. Abib 1 is always a Wednesday every year. It must be a Wednesday, and the Qumran calendars actually always do. They reflect this, and that's why that is accurate. And the year is complete 364 days. Boom! That is the solar calendar, the solar year, the sun's exact 364-day course, never the moon. Just as they try to insert as scenes very stupidly, these uh, also who can't read, uh, who run the Dead Sea Scrolls, also try to insert their Babylonian lunar calendar, but they cannot get away with it. Not here. You will find it sometimes in parentheses where they try to add words to passages. Uh, we've seen that. We've caught it. We've exposed it at times in other videos. It is fraud every time. Remember, the sun did not start time. The three days were counted before it was created. But it is the watch or the measure or standard, it's called the sign, for days, weeks, months, and years. The moon fails on all of those accounts, but it does have a purpose. It does, and it is a beautiful thing for feasts, but we're going to get there. The Jewish calendar is not the Hebrew nor the Bible calendar. It is the Babylonian one, and it's wrong every day, every week, every month, and every year, period. They even defile the feasts because you still need the sun to get to the feast date. And then the moon, as part of that day, defines the start of the evening event for three of the feasts in the beginning. So two were historic events that were evening events. Duh. And one is an evening concept of atonement. So nothing there that is abnormal to scriptural precedence either. Now here's just one month from the uh, one calendar of many found in Qumran Bethabara, uh, laid out here by Giza Verms. Uh, see, the year begins on Wednesday, but the week still starts on Sunday. That's not the start of the week. Sunday is still the first day of the week. It's always been the first day of the week. Uh, and the uh, Sabbath has always been Saturday, the seventh day of the week, and it still is. No one can change that. Uh, Yahusha could have if, uh, if 
uh, that were something he was uh, supposed to do, but he didn't do it. He said he wasn't going to do it, uh, so that didn't happen. The fourth day is when the timekeeper, the watch, was created. This is a beeb, the first month of the year, right here on screen. Uh, it starts at sunrise, as Enoch could not be clearer in describing every single day as being uh, beginning with the sun rising in the east gate, period. There's nothing to discuss about this passage or that passage or this passage. There's 364 days of the sun starting every single one of them. There is never any discussion to be had about the moon being that measure replacing the sun. It has other purposes, but that is not its function. So, a little science taken on, and it fails. Enoch passes this simple, quick test, and that should not be a surprise. Uh, the guy was far smarter than anyone living today. Uh, this sun calendar is the calendar for days, weeks, months, and years. And that's well established. Enoch says so again 364 times, because every day is defined by the rising of the sun, never the moon, even once. 364 days is the Bible calendar, and that ain't the moon, which is 10 days too soon. Is the moon bad? No. It is simply error to use it for things for which it was not created. That's all. Do we say the moon is bad? Never have we ever said that. It is beautiful and has a purpose, and we'll get into that next. We break down the moon and what Enoch says about its erratic cycle, though that is its perfect course. There's nothing wrong with it, but it does not follow the sun, and it is not supposed to be uh, used uh, as a measure for days, weeks, months, or years. That's just fact. The sun is never the moon. So is Enoch some strange doctrine here? I mean, does it really seem strange? Because it actually doesn't. It doesn't test as strange. Not even remotely, in our opinion. We even find it affirmed by the temple priest's calendar from Qumran Bethabara. Again, no surprise, as they kept Enoch and Jubilees as inspired Bible canon, even calling, in writing, Jubilees is Torah. Boom. Now, who cares what Pharisees kept or said? They have no value to add to anything. If you believe the words of Messiah and the temple priests who call them the sons of darkness, the sons of Belial, the seed of Satan, the synagogue of Satan, liars, thieves, hypocrites, brood of vipers, I mean, must I really continue? <laughs> because the list is massive and none of it is positive. Why have scholars lost track of this enemy? That's the real question. Yahushua did not, and neither do you and I need to. We can keep track. Next, we will continue with a couple of more videos uh, on this topic, but we're going to go into the moon, including our response to another channel out there uh, who must have somehow gotten a hold of the idea uh, that the moon is wrong, perhaps from us. Well, it is wrong, so there you go. And uh, the guy attempts to defend the moon, really weak, but we are going to address some of the things that he said. Uh, we'll slam dunk that next, uh, because he doesn't actually make any valid points. Uh, he relies heavily on the Sefer, and we're going to prove to you that the Sefer is wrong in this regard. It has to be, because if the Sefer was right, then Enoch's wrong. So which is it? Is Enoch right? Or is the Sefer right? Well, we'll go with Enoch every time. We love him, and he's a nice guy, and we even watch his channel some, at least we have over the years. I know some of the other guys probably do even more than me, but we believe he's well-meaning. However, we will address this head on next. We have almost 450 videos on this channel, one for every day of the year, uh, many just as profound with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos, and now six in Spanish to start. We also have been setting up subtitles for 20 plus languages for most of our videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. 
Join our email list as YouTube fails to notify often, and we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up there. We now have alternative platforms for videos on Rumble, Odyssey, and Utreon, and our new podcast is also available for all of our videos as well. All links in the description box. Friend us on Facebook at The God Culture Space Hyphen Space Original. If you prefer an alternative, we now have Parlor and Gab. Links below. We have six books published internationally, being read in over 100 countries, with a new release now available. The first book of Enoch, the oldest book in history, and we prove it right there in the introduction. Read it. We also have now launched Ophir Philippines Coffee Table Book in the U.S., Canada, U.K., and many overseas markets on Amazon, and it's available in hardcover or softcover there. Additionally, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar with color maps and interior. As so many had requested overseas, we already had that uh, with color maps in the Philippines. But that too is available in hardcover or softcover, uh, both in color or also in black and white, uh, if you wish. All books, including Solomon's Treasure, are now free in ebook. Yes, folks, our content is free. And don't forget the book of Enoch, First Enoch, is also available in hardcover color, softcover color, and black and white color on Amazon. But in the Philippines, it's just black and white. That's all we can offer at this time. Just go to OphirInstitute.com for all the links for your area for all of our books. More coming soon. Thank you for watching. Now always remember, prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone.